chapter 28. Very gently, using a little hammer and long thin nails, he nailed some boards across the door. The garage trembled as he worked and he told us to keep back. We stood in the wilderness, staring, shaking our heads. He got some black gloss paint and wrote danger across the boards. He bought some coke for us and some beer for himself. And we all sat against the house wall and stared at the garage. Better get it made safe, eh, said Dad. My uncle's a builder, um, said Coot. He'd make it safe. He always does garages and extensions and things. Aye, said Dad. He'd tell you to knock the whole thing down and start again. Ah, said Dad. Aye, some folk fight to keep things that should have been smashed back years ago. That's what my uncle says. I looked at the garage and I imagined it gone. I saw the big emptiness that would take its place. I said Coot again. He says the best jobs start with a massive sledgehammer and a huge old skip. He squeaked his coke. The blackbird flew to the edge of the garage roof and perched there. I knew it would be watching the wilderness looking for beetles and fat worms and for its babies. He wants us gone, I said. Coot cocked his finger and thumb like a gun and he eyed the bird as if he was going to shoot it. Aiming, gotcha, he said, and he, his hand recoiled as if he'd just fired. Dad told Leaky and Coot it was good to see them again. Michael's been moping, he said. A good kick about with his mates is just what the doctor ordered. Not against the garage though, eh, said Leaky. No, not against the garage. We took the ball and went through the house into the front street again. Mina wasn't there. I played better now, but I couldn't help turning up and looking into the empty tree. I imagined her alone with Skellig in the dark house. I caught them laughing at me. Missing her already, said Coot. I raised my eyes and tried to grin. I went to sit on our front garden wall. Who is she anyway? asked Leaky. I shrugged. She's called Mina. What school she at? Oh, she doesn't go to school. They both looked at me. How's that? said Leaky. Does she play wag? said Coot. Her mother teaches her, I said. And they looked at me again. Wow, said Leaky. I thought you had to go to school. Wow, imagine it, said Coot. They imagined it for a while. She's lucky, said Leaky. But what's she do for mates then? Who's her friends? Oh, I don't know if I'd like to be stuck at home all day. They think schools stop you from learning, I said. They think schools try to make everybody just the same. Nah, that's rubbish, said Coot. I said Leaky. We're learning all day long in school. I shrugged. Yeah, maybe. Is that why you're not coming in, said Leaky? Is it because you're never coming back? Are you going to get that lassie's mum to teach you too? Of course I'm not. But they are going to teach me some things, I said. Like what? They're going to teach me to model with clay. And about William Blake. William Blake, said Coot. Is he the bloke who's got the butcher's shop in the town? No, he's a poet and a painter, he said. I said, and he said that school drives all the joy out of life. They looked at each other and they grinned. Leaky couldn't look me in the eye and I could feel my face burning and burning. Look, I said, I can't tell you anything, but the world is full of amazing things. Coot sighed and shook his head and bounced the ball between his knees. I've seen them, I said. Leaky stared at me. I was imagining taking him through the danger door, taking him to Skellig and showing him. For a moment, I was dying to tell him what I'd seen and what I'd touched. There she is, said Coot. We turned together and there was Mina climbing into her tree again. Ha, she's a monkey girl, said Leaky. Coot giggled. Hey, he said. Maybe Ras Rasputin's right about the evolution stuff. He could come round and look at her and see, look, <laughs> monkeys still all around us. <laughs>